Hello, it's Gem Games here once again, and in this video we're going to start creating the character customization or character selection menu. So yeah, let's get started. First, we want to go to the GM Endless Runner, and we want to create a event dispatcher. Okay, let's call this change camera. Okay, we don't have to do anything else here, so let's compile, save, and we can close this. Now, what we want to do, we want to actually uh, add a new camera, camera actor. Okay, now let's go to this old camera, camera actor. Let's, this is the main menu camera, so let's actually rename it. Let's call it main menu. Okay, and let's rename this camera to uh, character selection. Okay, now let's copy these values from here. So let's right click from here and copy. Now let's go to this camera and let's paste them. Okay, now let's rotate it 90 degrees and now let's move it to, let's actually check, our character is 700 units on the X. So let's set this to 700. Okay, now what we want to do, we want to open the level blueprint. And here on the event click in play, we set the uh, camera view to the main menu camera, okay? After that, what we want to do is we want to get game mode. We want to cast to GM and less runner. Okay, and from here we want to promote this to a variable. And we want to rename this to game mode ref. Okay, and after that what we want to do, we want to get from here and we want to bind event to change camera, okay? So when we create, when this game opens and we create this level, basically, it will bind uh, this event that we now create to when we call the change camera, on the game mode. Because uh, there are not many ways you can access this uh, level blueprint, blueprint otherwise, so yeah. Now from here, from the event, let's get from here and search for a custom event, add custom event. Let's call this custom event, change uh, camera. Okay, and let's move it to here. And after that, what we want to do, we actually also want to get the player character. So let's first get the delay until next tick. Okay, it will uh, wait until the next tick, so basically to the next frame. And after that, we want to get layer character, and we want to cast to third person character like this. Okay, this delay is here just for the uh, because uh, the player character might not have been uh, loaded before the level blueprint. I don't actually remember how it, uh, which is the, like, the order, but this way it will, uh, casting will always, uh, it will never basically fail. So, this works. And after that, we want to just promote this to a variable also. Let's rename this to layer uh, ref. Okay, now, what we want to do here on the change camera, what we want to do here is we want to first get player controller and from here we want to set view target with blend. Okay, let's get from the change camera. And the new view target, let's get from it and get a select node like this 
now uh, we actually have to go back to the game mode for a second so let's compile save and let's go to the represent map and to the gm and let's runner we want to add here a variable let's call this variable menu camera index let's change the type to integer let's compile save and we can close this so now we can get the game mode ref let's actually move it to here now let's get the main ah, sorry menu camera index now let's connect it to here like this okay let's compile now let's go back to the third person map let's select the main menu camera let's check that it's selected now from here let's right click and create a reference and also let's go back and select his uh, character selection camera and yeah let's go to third person uh, map let's right click and create reference and now from the option zero we want to connect to the main menu like this and from the option one to the character selection okay now let's set the blend time to 0.5 seconds and after that we want to create a switch on integer int now we want to get this value from here and add a reroute like always let's actually align this so q let's add two pins zero and one and what we want to do now is we want to create two new custom events so under here so let's create a custom event let's actually copy it Control c Control v like that let's rename this first to main menu and the second to let's call this character selection okay now we can go back to here and from the zero we want to call the main menu and from the one we want to call the character selection okay so what we are doing now is when we when we call this uh, change camera event it will uh, play this event and it will basically change between the main menu and character selection camera so between these two okay and after that it will uh, change uh, call the function if the main menu index is zero it will call the main menu and if it's one it will call the character selection and what we want to do on these events is we want to actually from here we want to create widget we want to select the main menu compile okay and uh, yeah and now we actually want to go to the this uh, main menu widget so let's click from here and let's open it let's go to the graph let's add a new variable let's call this game mode ref let's change this type to gm uh, and endless endless runner object reference let's make it instance editable and expose on spawn like that let's compile let's save let's go back here now let's uh, click from anything we have to select anything else than the main menu and change it back to main menu now it will have this game mode ref here okay now what we want to do we want to get the game mode ref that we have here and connect it to here let's compile save and after that we want to add to viewport okay let's compile save now what we also want to do let's go to the main menu widget um, let's select the button actually I want to move this button a little bit downwards so let's set this Y uh, alignment to 2 and now let's duplicate the button so let's select here check that the button is uh, selected not the text let's duplicate it 
Now let's change this name to character selection button. Let's move this to here. Now let's set the position. Actually, let's set the position X to zero and Y to zero and alignment to one. No, 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 not sorry. Minus 0.75. Okay, that's good. Now let's select, click this text, and let's call, uh, change this to character. Okay. Now let's click on this, scroll down, and here on the on clicked. What we want to do here now? Uh, actually, we will have to do one more thing before. Uh, let's go to the third person map. Let's open the GM endless runner one more time. And here on the begin play, we have this create main menu widget. Let's move this a little bit further. Uh, let's change this to something else and back to the main menu. Now we have the game mode ref. Let's get from this and get the self, get reference to self. Okay. Now we will pass this reference straight away to the main menu. Now let's compile, save, and now we can close this. Now here on the main menu, we actually on the on clicked play button. We can basically now remove this casting from here. Move this closer. And we can just connect the game mode ref to target. Compile, save. Okay. So now what we want to do here on the character selection, after click, we have clicked on the character selection button. We want to get the game mode ref. And we want to set menu camera index we want to set it to one because one is the index of the camera the character selection camera after that we want to get from here again and we want to call change change camera okay now let's select these and align them after that we want to remove from parent Okay, if we compile, save, and now if we play, and we click on the character, you can see the camera moves here. Okay. Okay, so yeah. And now what we want to do is we want to actually duplicate the main menu widget. So let's duplicate it and let's call this character selection. Let's open it. And what we want to do here, we want to actually delete the high scores. So let's select both of these and delete. Let's select the coins, text and the value and let's set the offset top to 50. Now here we want to delete this play button. This character button, we want to move this. So let's actually first rename it. Let's call it back button. And let's move it to, let's see, one, no, 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 1.75. I think that's correct. Yeah, 1.75. Now let's select the text and let's change it to back. Okay. Now let's go to the graph. And let's delete Let's actually compile so we can see. Okay, this let's delete. We don't need that anymore. And yeah. Now here on the unclicked back button, let's set the menu camera index to zero. And then we want to do everything else like before. Okay. Now let's compile, save, and we can close this. Now let's go back to the main menu. Uh, sorry, third person map, yeah. And here on the character, uh, on this character selection uh, event, what we want to do is we want to create widget. Create widget, like here. And we want to create uh, character selection. Or character selection, yeah. And we want to get the game mode ref and connect it to the game mode ref. Exactly like here. 
then we want to add to viewport. Okay, compile, save, and let's actually try. So if you click this, we go here, we go back, we go back here. Okay, it's basically already working somehow. But now let's make the character turn to us when we are here. So here on the third person map, what we want to do, we want to create yet another custom event. Oh, event like that. And let's call this rotate add character. And here on the rotate character, we want to add a input. Let's actually move this whole thing a little bit further down. Like this. And this input will be called like um let's call it uh, for for word like that let's add a branch condition to the forward like that now we want to create a timeline add timeline let's open it let's change the length to 0.5 track add float track let's add a key to here time zero value zero now let's add another key to here time 0.5 value one like that Okay, now let's click on here, right right click on here and click auto, so it will smooth it out. Okay, now we can compile, save and close this timeline. Now, let's connect the true to play from start and false to reverse from end. Now what we want to do, we want to get the player ref and we want to get the mesh. And from the mesh, we want to set relative rotation one let's connect it to the update now let's split this struct pin let's get from the set and let's get a lerp lerp node so let's connect a new track which is basically the alpha value it will uh, go between zero and one okay and when it's zero we want to set our value to minus 90 and when it's one we want to set it to minus one a okay now what we want to do we want to go back here and we want to call the function so on the main menu we want to call the rotate character and we want to make it uh, the fo yeah, leave the forward as false now let's copy this and paste it to here now we want to set the forward as true okay Compile, save, and let's see if everything works. It should work. So, character. Okay, this is lagging so much. Why is that happening? Uh, let's see. Try again. Okay, this is lagging so much. I don't know why, but I actually think everything is working, but... Um, let's see. So yeah, I don't know what is happening with my computer right now, but it, okay, it is working now. So character, now we are on the character selection menu. We cannot do anything here yet, but we have the menu uh, ready. So, and we can play, everything works. Yep. So yeah, uh, on the next video, we can uh, start creating the selection system or maybe create it com uh, completely i don't know yet how long it takes but yeah so it is working right now so i think that was actually for all for this video if you liked what you saw please click the like button and subscribe for more and yeah hope you have a great day and see you in the next one bye